Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be looking at the Blackmar Demer Gambit. And for anyone that's been following me knows that I'm a very aggressive player, and I really enjoy gambits. And this is one of my favorite gambits, so I wanted to take a look at it. And it starts out with pawn to d4, pawn to d5, pawn to e4, already giving away a pawn in the very beginning of the game. Pawn takes on e4, and then knight to c3. And you can transpose into this in a few variations. So a lot of players like to play the queen's pawn opening with queen to d4, but a lot of times they might not play pawn to e4 here because they already have an opening move in their repertoire like the queen's gambit line with pawn to c4. But a lot of players really hate playing the Scandinavian, myself included. So a lot of times if you see pawn e4 and blacker's pawns pawn to d5, you can now play pawn to d4. We transpose into the same Blackmar Demer Gambit. After they take on e4, then we can play knight to c3, and it's the same thing. So even if you don't like playing it when you start out with d4, if you start out with e4, like a lot of players like myself, and you come across a d5, you can still transpose into it. Now from here, Black's going to play knight to f6. Simple development move, and at the same time, he's defending this pawn that we're attacking. Since Black is up in material, he's going to want to hold on to that material, which is very important. Now from here, White has a few options, but his main line that you're going to see is pawn to f3. And from here, Black's going to take on f3, and White has two options from here to take with his knight, or to play the rider gambit, which is queen takes on f3. And the first one we're going to take a look at is knight takes on f3. Now if you just take a look at it right away, White is down a pawn in material, but this is a very aggressive line from White. So if you're more of a defensive player, you don't like to give up material early on in the game, I highly recommend not playing this because it is one of the most aggressive lines that you can play and it's not as easy to attack as your Danish Gambit where you have all your bishops lined up at the king. You're really going to have to be very creative as a chess player to win playing the Black Mardemer Gambit. Now with that said, it is very lethal and if you do practice and know a lot of lines, you can play play this line very well. So, with that said, from here, Black has a few lines that he can play. If he moves his bishop down to g4, then we're going to play our pawn to h3. And we're going to try to chase the bishop up the board. A lot of times, players won't trade off their bishops early on because they want to have that bishop pair. So if he does continue to bring his bishop back, then we're going to just continue up the board with pawn to g4. And as you can tell already, we've weakened our king side. We are not castling on the king side from here. More times than not, any time you play the Black Mardemer Gambit, probably 90 times out of 100, you're going to castle on the queen side. It's one of the things that you always want to think about. You're going to castle on the queen side when you play this. Now there is one variation where you may castle on the king side, and that is if instead he Instead of playing the bishop, if he plays his knight to c6, which is a very common development move, bringing his knight to c6, attacking our pawn on d4, we can now bring our bishop to b5, pinning this knight down. At the same time, we can now castle on the king side, which is completely safe. And at the same time, kind of like the king's gambit, where this f file is semi-open for our rook, this is going to be a very good and aggressive game for us. But if we play this, more times than not, we're going to be focusing on the king side. We're going to be focusing on this f file. We can bring our bishop back if we need to to c4. We're going to be eyeing on this f7 square. It's very important. If we do castle king side, which we don't often, it's going to kind of change up what we're looking to do. When we castle on the queen side, instead, we're going to focus on the d file. We're going to focus on not allowing the king to castle at all. But if we do play this variation, we're going to castle on the king side and look to eye down on this f file. Very important. If instead from the beginning, if you want to play an even more aggressive opening than the knight takes on f3, then I recommend the rider gambit. And the rider gambit is queen takes on f3. And from here, black's going to take on d4. And as you can already tell, we've given up two pawns. We're down two pawns in material. And so this is an even more aggressive opening, but at the same time, I feel like this, for me, it plays better into my style, but it really is going to keep black on his toes, because a lot of times, if you play this, a lot of black players are going to look at you and think you're retarded, because it looks like white has absolutely no idea what they're doing, just giving up pawns, 
bringing out their queen early, and it doesn't look like white knows what they're doing, when in fact, this actually plays very well for white. So from here, white's going to continue bringing his queen to e3, attacking this queen from black on d4, and trying to get it out of the way. And as you can see here, we've already moved all of our pieces from the b, c, and d1 files. So this automatically tells us we're going to be casting on the queen side. I know I told you before we're going to cast on the queen side, but specifically now, since we have all our pieces out of the way, we're looking to castle on the queen side. And then we're going to bring our rook to d1, and we're going to just eye down this d file the entire time. Our goal is to not let the king move from here, specifically not let the king move his pawn out of the way, move his dark square bishop and castle on the queen on the king side, so we really want to keep it at bay. From here, there's two moves that you may see from black here. One, which we'd really like to see, is if his queen came to b4. And this is actually the trap that I'm going to discuss in another video, and that's the Hollister trap. So you definitely want to make sure you take a look at that trap video. But the most common move that you will see, and the best move that you will see, is queen to g4. Now once we see this, we're just going to continue to castle on the queen side. We're going to let the queen from black move around, lose some tempos. At the same time, we're just going to develop rapidly while black just sits there and starts to... He's up in material, but at the same time, he hasn't done much. As you can see, if he were to trade off right now, and we take with our knight, we're down two pawns in material. But if you look at the board... It's actually, in my opinion, much easier to play from white. We have both of our knights centered on the board, easily developed. We have our queen castled on the king, queen side with our rook eyeing down on this fully open d file. And at the same time, we can bring our light square bishop easily into the action. We can bring our other rook into the action. We have a lot of attacking prowess. Again, in chess, it's not about who's up in material, it's about who can attack the opponent's king. In this case, we can attack the opponent's king very easy. So, from here, we have a lot of fighting options. It really depends on where black goes. But keep in mind, if you look at this position, there's a lot of different things that white can do. So, if you play this, use your creativity. There's a lot of different fighting lines that you have here. But just from looking at this, you can tell that white has a lot of fighting and very aggressive lines. So this is the Blackmar Deemer Gambit. Make sure you take a look at the Holster Trap because it is and plays a very important role, especially if you play the Rider Gambit, which is the aggressive opening that we take to look at when Queen takes on F3. So take a look at that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that. If you haven't checked out the website, thechesswebsite.com, pretty easy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next video. See you.